Hey guys, this is John. Welcome back to the channel. You thought we were done filming in the garage, but maybe one or two more. Uh, we're going to start here anyway. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go through my entire collection. People ask, you know, what bikes do you have left after you sold some? And, and uh, we're going to go over that today. We're going to start with the oldest and go to the newest. And uh, we're not going to spend too much time on each of the bikes because if we did, this thing would be an hour long, which we don't want it to be. So, and we'll take a little break in between and show you some other things. So let's get started. Okay, the first bike in the collection, the oldest bike I have is this Frejus, or Frejus. You tell me how to pronounce it. Cool bike, I've done nothing with it. Got this from Mark Matei from Cycle Smithy. Uh, I got some cotter cranks. Look at this. Nice Campagnolo derailleur and shifters. Beautiful chrome lugs. A little bit of light pitting and rust, but you know what? I love this thing. It's gorgeous. And if you know what year this is, let me know. It's supposedly early 60s. It's got the wrong wheels. Obviously, 27 inch clinchers. We'll get that right once we redo it. That's bike number one. Next one in line is this beautiful Schwinn Super Sport from 1971 in the coveted campus green. And I have it set up like an upright Taurus with some, a sprung brook saddle. Beautiful wheels. Check out these Novo Tipo hubs, some Wilbur rims. Awesome. Uh, one piece crank, which is standard. Sun Tour derailleur is not. Center pole brakes, chromoly frame. Just a nice cozy bike for around town. Then we have this 1972-ish Frejus. Frejus, again. Tell me how to pronounce that. Got an over record kit on it. You're going to see that as a theme throughout this collection. And uh, beautiful bike. Great shape. Brooks saddle. Uh, Janelle Barn stem is not period correct. We're going to work on getting the right one. Tell me what you think should be on there on this bike. Triple T. What do you think? What should we put on there? Like an old record Triple T barn stem. Great bike. Love the graphics on it. Brought this back from the dead. This thing was really kind of crusted over. And there's a separate video on this one if you'd like to see it. We have a 1972 Peugeot PX10. Uh, beautiful bike. Reynolds tubing. The short point Nervex lugs. And, you know, simplex rear derailleur. Strong light cranks. Great bike. Iconic bicycle. This one is still for sale. Uh, and in great shape. It's actually one of my, my most popular videos. Check it out if you want to see rebuild on this. Next, we have a beautiful coveted bicycle from the Greg Brooks collection. Uh, part of that collection from Tennessee. And honestly, this has become a favorite in my collection. One that will never leave. Beautiful bike. Believed to be about a 1971 through 73. Not quite sure. Uh, similar to the uh, bike, or almost identical to the bike. Found on the book by Richard Ballantyne. Richard's uh, Books of Bikes and Bicycling or something like that. Beautiful, beautiful bike. Reynolds tubing and, of course, full campy. Um, just in beautiful shape. And another one of my more popular videos. Check this bike out. You'll see all the individual specs on it. But check that out. Check out that lug work. You just can't beat it. Next up is the first bike I had in my collection ever in terms of a vintage bike. 1973 World Voyager. Uh, one of the first bikes that they brought over from Japan. And it's got the first Dura-Ace group on there with some, well, mixture, I should say, with some Diacomp center pole brakes. Beautiful chrome logs. This one's in fantastic shape. Beautiful bike. All original. It does not have the original saddle, but in orange. I did have the blue one, which I sold to the Bicycle Museum in Elizabeth, Illinois. I bought that in 1992 for $150 from Budget Bicycle. This next one is a complete gem. It is a 1973 Raleigh International with the coveted Capella lugs. Now, the year before and year after that had the Nervex lugs, but this one is different. Champagne in color. Nova Record group set. Kind of did a retro mod on the wheels. Um, you got some Open Pro rims from Mavic. But beautiful bike. Great shape. Picked this one up on uh, Craigslist from Lafayette, Indiana. Next, we have a 1974 Raleigh Professional. Wow, I'm when I got this bike, I was so excited. I got it from Beverly Bike and Ski. Been in business since 1927, and they are unfortunately closing their doors this year. 
Beautiful Nova Record group as usual. I got the stock AVA rims. Need to get some sew ups on here that actually hold air. And you know, Brooks Saddle, the big rivets, dig it. And I really want to ride this thing. I haven't yet because I got to change out those tires. Beautiful bike. You'll see a 1980 version of this soon. Another early bike for my collection. Well, relatively early anyways. This is the Moto Pecan Grand Record from 1974. I would say it's nine out of 10 condition. Beautiful bike. Believe it or not, I bought this from the Bike Farmer. If you know that channel, it's a great channel. If you, if you like to see bikes getting rebuilt. And he sold this to me a few years back before he had his channel. And it's in beautiful shape. One of, more, one of my more popular videos as well. Not because it's a great video, probably because it's a great bike. So, yeah, check that out too. Next, we have a 1972 Schwinn Paramount. Now, this one was repainted by uh, Waterford Cycles. And just a beautiful bike here. Campus green, full camp in yellow. And I, I got this bike redone because since I was a kid, I wanted one. I wanted uh, this color. I wanted this group and it's perfect and love it. Nice Brooks saddle, Brooks tape, Chanelli cockpit, beautiful bike. And next to it is another 1972 Paramount. What you might find interesting about both of these bikes is they were not made by Schwinn Bicycle Company. They're made uh, by Don Mainland. They have a P on the bottom bracket and the P signifies they were built in Wisconsin, not at Waterford, but by a gentleman named Don Mainland. I think it was called Pioneer. If you remember the name of that company, put it in the comments section. This bike is very similarly equipped to this one. I had that one first, but I had to have a campus green one. My next bike also from the Greg Brooks collection, 1974 Mozzie Grand Criterium. Just awesome. If you know this bike, you know the significance of it. It is gorgeous. Full Nova record, obviously. They all are, back in that day. Some kind of fuzzy seat on there. Chanelli cockpit as usual. This one has not been done yet. I've not overhauled it yet. It's gonna get hoods, tape, great cleaning, and much to your chagrin, some of you anyways, I'm putting dust caps on there, dang it. And it's a great bike. I think it might be a repaint, it might not. Tell me what you think of this color. But uh, if it was a repaint, it was a good one. It's sharp. Next bike is a Bianchi Specialissima from 1976 or 1977. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section what you think, what year it is. And beautiful bike, new old stock frame and fork. You know, not, not repainted, it's original with a, a nice uh, Bianchi Triple T Pentagraph stem. We got ourselves a full Campagnolo group as usual. Now, the only thing incorrect on this thing would be the wheels. These are Mavic ME40s. They're new old stock. Um, the wheels are new old stock. The uh, crank, seat post, handlebar stem, headset, and maybe a, oh, in the chain. Uh, but yeah, beautiful bike. Love this thing. And of course, it's gotta be Celeste Green. Okay, yet another bike from the Greg Brooks collection. I believe this to be a 1978 Geos or Joss Torino. How would you pronounce it? Spell it phonetically in the comment section. And once you know it, it has Super Record on it. Go figure. Beautiful bike and Super Record seat posts and everything. Would this have been would would this have been the correct post for 1978? I don't know the answer to that. A brand an old turbo saddle, a little bit of wear. But a great looking bike. I can't wait to rebuild this one. This one has not been touched yet either. We're going to put the correct size cog and chain on there. And some correct pedals. Also from 1978, we have a Schwinn Volari. Bought this from the longest continuous... How do you say that? The longest continuously running bike shop in Illinois. Sunbaum Cyclery in Joliet, Illinois. It belonged to the daughter of one of the owners there. Beautiful bike. I don't think it has more than eight miles on it. Um, it's not my size. That's why I'm not putting miles on it. Great bike. They call it the Baby Paramount. It was about $100 less retail than a Schwinn Paramount. Chrome lugs, uh, Reynolds tubes, Reynolds fork, 
and a first generation Dura set. We're talking the whole thing. Yeah. I've been meaning to do a complete overhaul video on this for the longest time, but with the life getting the way it was, I got too busy, but we'll do it soon. I will be hanging out with Seth from Golden Velo and Mike Cohn from Boulder Bicycle. I'm hoping either one of them may have the replacement hoods for these dried up crusty ones. But I'm looking forward to doing this bike. We're going to do a complete overhaul and cleaning. It looks pretty new, but it has not been touched. And it'll be a long video because I'm going to show every step. All right, this next bike here is an RRB, and that comes from RRB Cycles in Kenilworth, Illinois. The builder is Ron Boy. And I ran into him on Facebook and I said, hey, I'm looking for one of your old frames. He sent me an ad and uh, this is the bike from that ad. Pretty cool. It's got some arrow stays, fastback stays. I have to find that seat bolt, binder bolt. All to be ought to be interesting. It's a little bit of a rust bucket. needs a little bit of help. But this one's going to Jeffrey Bach. So I'm kind of excited about that. He's going to paint that for me. And uh, we got to come up with a color scheme for it. Next is a 1980 Harry Quinn out of England. And in 1980, I don't think Harry was building his own bikes. Uh, they're pretty cool anyways. Um, yeah, I think this might be a repaint. But anyways, it's a beautiful bike. I got it from the Greg Book Brooks collection. And full Nova Record kit. Pretty standard for its day. In great condition. I do have a separate video on this as well. Check it out. Next is a 1980 Centurion Super Elite. Beautiful bike because it's brand new. Zero miles. Not a spec on it. This bike was bought from Sportif Importers in a box. Now, they're out of business long gone. That's why it was found late in its life here. Got a rare rims. Kind of cheesy generic hubs. Cyclone. Uh, derailleur system. SR uh, cranks, pretty typical typical for 1980. This bike is for sale for $650. Local pickup only. Hey guys, this is my 1980 Raleigh Competition GS. To me, it's a very special bicycle. I guess I worked on them back in the day when I worked at a bike shop and I always loved the bike. This one is extra special. If you look at it, it's a little glossy, it's a little shiny. It's a little pinstripe, why is that? Well. Jeffrey Bach repainted this bike. You can see a separate, couple separate videos on this thing. One thing I find kind of cool is the, the tri-arm um, crank set. Pretty cool. The, the three-arm spider, pretty neat. And the rest of it, got, you got Grand Sport hubs, Grand Sport rear derailleur, cranks, pedals, seat post, headset, but it's gorgeous. Wineman concave rims. Beautiful bicycle. Next up is a 1981 Schwinn Voyager 11.8. Love this bicycle. It was my first quote unquote what I thought upper end bike was back in the day when I worked in a Schwinn shop. This bike has very few miles as demonstrated by the nubs on the tires and the lack of wear on the gold freewheel. Or I should say cassette in this matter. One of the first six speed cassettes. And it just holds a tender place in my heart. I just really love this bike. I got it from Bernie. Thanks, Bernie. I'm sure you're watching. Friend of the channel, local gentleman. You'll see him again on the channel. Just a great looking bike and in great shape. We also have a 1980 Raleigh Professional. And as you can tell, they got rid of the fastback stays and the sloping crown. You know, honestly, I felt like they were cheapening the bikes at this point. I think the 74 is a much cooler bike. Uh, in terms of performance, this is probably a little bit stiffer, but nonetheless, great bike. No record components, of course. Perfect shape. This one is, the only problem with that is a decal. Everything else in this bike is literally perfect. Chanelli barn stem, brook saddle. Rims, they're not the correct rims. You got some open pros. We modernized them. That was one of my first bikes, guys. I didn't put the right stuff on there, but it's gorgeous. And this one's been ridden a few times. I enjoy it. Nice, comfortable English bike. Next up, Next up we have a 1980 Schwinn Superior, also made by Don Mainland up in Wisconsin. Uh, my understanding is that back in the day during the bike boom, and then of course uh, afterwards with the Superior, uh, if Schwinn didn't have the capacity to build it, they gave it to Don, and Don would build it. So, B 
beautiful bike. This came with full Campagnolo Grand Sport, but I do have an over-record derailleur on it uh, because I hate Grand Sport rear derailleurs. How's that? Triple T barn stem, um, some kind of SRC post, uh, Chinelli unit canter saddle. I probably didn't pronounce that right. And I do have look pedals on it because I ride this bike. Full Reynolds tubing. Now it was the same frame as the Schwinn Paramount with the Nervex lugs, just not chromed. They put a TNG fork on it with the chrome tips. In 1982, I started working at a Schwinn stall. In 1982, I started working at a Schwinn store called Action Cyclery in Streamwood, Illinois. The top end bikes on the floor were the Schwinn Super Sport and a Super Sport SP. And I, they were ultra lightweight, 26 pound touring bikes. The Super Sport sported some screw together racks, which I thought were kind of fun back in the day. A uh, really big aluminum dork disc, cyclone derailleurs, SR crank, very low miles on this, you could just tell. And it's in great shape. I do have the coveted front rear rack for that. And SR bar and stem. Seat post, your typical mix from 1981 or two. And then they had an upgrade. Now the upgrade was a Super Sport SP. Now, if you know all the differences, please, please put them in the comment section below. I know for a fact some of the upgrades were the uh, Segino TA crank, which was a stiffer crank and more coveted at the time. Uh, the wheels on this are not stock. The wheels are very similar, uh, but I have some Weinman concaves on here with some what they call Sovos brand uh, sealed bearing hubs. They did, did have um, a one-piece rack, proprietary. They were not a two-piece rack or a screw-together rack. I guess that was an upgrade. But other than that, guys, tell me what the differences were. I don't remember. Did one have more chromoly than the other one? I don't know. But there's a $50 upgrade. Next up, we have a 1981 Lotus Supreme. It is a really cool bike, guys. I like it maybe just because I'm a sucker for chrome lugs. Got the sloping crown with the cutout here, panographed here. Great Japanese frame. The mix of parts, I actually took off another bike. Originally, these parts were on this bike. It's a 1988 Auctioner in chrome, Italian made. And we'll talk more about that bike later. Now this bike here, I'm thinking about selling the frame set. I had it listed for $325 in my last video, local pickup only. And it's in terrific shape. Got the aero seat post. And basically it's an AX-EX mix with the Dyna-Drive cranks and in, in beautiful shape. For those interested, the only flaw is right there. A little bit of light rust, only right there, but everywhere else is nice and clean. Next bike is my ultra lightweight Jack Taylor touring bike. Just kidding, this thing is a tank. I never had a heavier bike in my life, but it is full Reynolds tubes, extremely long wheelbase. This thing is silly. I just took it across Ohio on the Ohio and Erie Trail. And there's so many unique features of this thing such as the shifters, the double rear brakes, that you gotta see the individual video on that. And because it's, there's so much to this. It's basically built like a tandem, but it's not a tandem. Rode that across the state, very comfortable. A little harsh on the front end, very pliable on the back. Figure that one out. Great bike. Got some period correct, strong light cranks. Hooray dual part derailleur, Mayfac brakes. Just a really cool touring bike. Next up, we have ourselves a 1982 Mercian. And uh, once again, I got this thing to old stock. It rides wonderfully. This is the uh, Strata Special. Strata Special, however way you want to pronounce that. And this is gonna get boring, guys. Still a Campagnolo uh, Super Record and Nova Record mix. Beautiful Super Record seat post. Why? Because it's blingy. And we got the, the cool brook saddle and tape on it. Uh, ultra polished stem, which is a Chinelli. And I built it up with some large flange hubs. And I guess it's not correct, of course, but I have some open pro rims. For a while there, when I first started collecting, I started putting modern rims on the bikes. Uh, probably not the best thing to do, but I did it anyway. After that, same year, we have a Mercian Vincitori. Why do I like the Vincitori? Why do I love the Mercians? They're just 
beautiful bikes, hand built out of uh, Derby, England. And check out that lug work. Just beautiful, signature lugs, just gorgeous. Once again, large flange hubs. Built this one up with the Campanile Triple, the Rally Rear Derailleur, and uh, of course, Super Record. You know, the Super Record seat posts and stuff, once again, they're built up to be blingy. We have a 1983 Colnago. Now, well-meaning people, knowledgeable people that know their bicycles argue about which model this is. I think it's called a Super Profile. You can disagree if you like, it's up to you. But it does have the seam top and down tube. It does have the seamed uh, stays and it doesn't have the stay bridge. So that's why people think it is the uh, Super Profile. Uh, full su Super Record Group. All right, we have a 1983-ish Gerciotti here. Gerciotti? Gerciotti, you tell me. Now, I am selling this as a frame set. It was a bike, but I started tripping it down. So uh, I'm gonna sell it with a Nova Record headset. And it's Italian threaded. So you know, it's spaced 125. Cool frame set. This is a repaint with new decals. And I'll tell you what though, it looks great. Slightly milky around the lugs, but a solid paint job nonetheless. And I'm selling this frame for $350. If you're interested, let me know in the comments section below or email me. Next in line is a bike that is for sale. Now, originally, if you saw my selling my bikes video, I listed it as a 56. It is indeed a 58 with a shorter head tube and a little higher uh, clearance here. It is indeed a 58 to top. Full Reynolds, I'm sorry, full Columbus frame and fork. A little bit of mix here. We have some Nova Record drivetrain. This one has specialized hubs with Mavic ME40 rims, or I have some campy hubs as well, if you like. This bike was raced by a local guy named Doug, who I know, and he sold me the bike. And it just doesn't quite fit me right. Got a 120 stem on there. We have some Modolo Speedy Brakes in gold. I think I'm gonna do a video on this bike and clean it up unless I sell it first. Got the gold levers, but this, these are chewed up. I do have some replacement gray levers for it. We're selling this for $850, local pickup only. Next bike is a favorite of mine. It is a Pro Miata from 1983. Now they had the Pro and then they had the Team. The Team had full Durace. This one originally would have came with uh, a mixture of Sunter Superb, SR and Diacomp which is great, but I love the way this bike rides. I wanted to ride it on uh, training rides and such. So I put a modern, well, 20, uh, it was a 2019 group, but modern when I did it, uh, of parts on it. It's the uh, Altegra mechanical group from that year. Guys, this bike is harsh, it rides stiff, but hell, it's a hell of a climber. Great bike. Turns out I'm missing the chain, I'm replacing the chain. So I kind of wore that out, time for a new one. But a beautiful bike. So, uh, the roll saddle, the pantograph stem, which I think is really cool. Digging that. Small flange hubs, open pro, no, I'm sorry, open four CD rims. Cool bike. Next up, we have a 1984 Paramount. And if you look at the top tube, I don't know if you can see it from here, it says the Paramount. I guess in 1983, 1984, they had a program where they will build whatever you want them to build for a, a price. I don't know what that price point was. If you know, let me know. But it does have chrome lugs, which is really rare on a Paramount of this age. It does have uh, chrome little bits, such as the brazons. Brazons here. The cable guides, check that out, nuts. Of course, dropouts and seat stay. Beautiful copper, uh, beautiful copper rails on the saddle. And that was built for Mr. Jeff Crinton and it builds Peddler, hope he's watching. And I still thank him profusely for this collection. He got me three of the bikes, this one and two others you'll see later. Uh, beautiful bike, um, triple crank, pretty unique. Super record rear derailleur with a long cage, how's that? Awesome bike. It's an award winner too. 
over at Mike Cohn's event called the Auburn, uh, or Classic Bicycles Auburn. Next is a 1986 Cannondale SR Doesn't Matter. When I say that it doesn't matter, they all had the same frame set. With this component group, it would have been the SR800. I have replicated a bike that I built in 1980 down to the color. Had it custom painted, uh, this forest green, yellow decals, Nova Record Super Record mix with some retro modded wheels. Got the Nova Record large flange hubs with the open pro rims from Mavic. I did this project, I forgot how long ago. You'll see a separate video on that. Got the really cool Super Record seat post and your riveted brook saddle. Great bike, very nostalgic for me. I had the same exact bike spec in 1987. All right, guys, the next next bike, I'm not sure of the year. This is another Gucciotti, Gucciotti, but uh, it's actually made by Allen, and it's full aluminum. Allen made bikes from many, many uh, different brands, and Gucciotti is one of them. Um, I had this set up with full campy, but guess what? I'm going to sell this as a frame set. If you're interested, I'm selling the frame and fork for $350, and you're saying, why so much? It's because, once again, guys, it's flawless, it's in terrific shape. Not gonna see any gouges or any of the anodizing, all scratched up, but uh, 60 centimeter frame, and it's awesome. We also have a late 80s Specialized LA, I think it's a 1987. Now this bike, I believe, was built by Giant Force Specialized. It's a full carbon frame with aluminum lugs, pretty cool, aluminum fork, with the tricolor uh, Ultegra kit on it, I did have this on my for sale video, but you know what? I decided to keep it. No reason to get rid of this thing. This thing is awesome. I'm a little bit over the weight limit though. <laughs> it's not necessarily maybe safe for me to ride even though I've ridden it a few times already. But yeah, great shape, it's a keeper. Next up, we have a 1988 uh, Schwinn Paramount. Team Wheaties. Now, this did not start life as a Team Wheaties bike. It is an 88 anniversary model without the gold fork. But this was repainted, not by Joe Bell, the painter, unfortunately. It was painted by Waterford. And uh, so, yeah, it was a recreation, but it is the correct uh, bicycle, if you will. Correct frame and components. Full Durace group. Um, it has a ray of rims, which is not a good idea, since it has Wolver written on the fork. But a beautiful bike nonetheless, and that is made in Waterford, uh, as was the last as was my, and it's made in Waterford as, it's also built in Waterford, Wisconsin, along with my 84 I showed you earlier. Next up, 1988 Schwinn Paramount as well, same year, but this is the, uh, the uh, anniversary edition with the limited edition gold fork. This bike is nuts. Now, by the way, I have separate videos on all of these, but this particular one, uh, they took a C-Record group. It was anodized by a company called Gardein, a Canadian uh, frame builder, and uh, beautiful bike. Now, what Jeff did, this is also a Jeff Grinton bike from Village Peddler, is he had other parts gold-plated. So this is gold anodized, but these are gold-plated parts. It's a mixture of anodization and gold plating, but honestly, most of it's anodized. Beautiful bike, never ridden, not even once. Don't know if it ever will be. I know some of you guys are crying, I'm sorry. The next bike is a Chuch. Chuch. Like he said, great bicycle. Now I understand this is one of my early bikes that I got on eBay and my understanding is that this thing was actually repainted by Giovanni Pilizzoli, he helped me with that name, uh, the original builder. He had, a, he had a program later on in his career where he was rebuilding his own bikes or repainting them. And I love the way this thing rides. This is a rider for me. Um, just love it. And I think it's from the late 80s, 87, 88, but I'm not sure. It does. Uh, it is a 10-speed drive bike, if you know what that means out of uh, Melbourne, Florida. Uh, that's about it on this bike. Next bike is an auctioner. Now, auctioner was a distributor. Olthen Auctioner is the gentleman that owned it. 
Now, Othin uh, was a distributor in Chicago on Peterson Avenue, and he he uh, he bought bikes and brought them over, mostly from Switzerland. But for one year, 1988, I believe it was, he believes it was, they had the Chrome Auctioner. Now, Chinelli Lugs, Chinelli Fork, Chinelli Bottom Bracket, beautiful bike. I asked Othin himself, who built this bicycle? And he could not tell me, his staff couldn't tell him, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful bike. Now, I asked him for decals for this bike. He asked me, how was it equipped? And I told him it had a Durace kit, the one that's on the Lotus over here. He goes, I'll make you a deal. You take off that garbage and put Campanello on it, and I'll send you the decal. So that I did. There you go. Back in the 90s, I worked for GT Bicycles, and we had a industry party. All of Interbike was invited, and it was awesome. All the, all the other bike companies and all the other reps were in the warehouse. And as I was walking through with one of my clients, I see this frame in a box in the for sale section. And it was a 1995 GT Edge aluminum. And it just had a small nick in the decal. And they were selling it for $350. And I just put it aside and uh, took it home that day. Uh, or sent it home that day, I should say. And this thing was awesome. It's a beautiful frame. I rode this bike from 1995 to 2011. Then I gave it to my nephew. And uh, now I have it back. I'm really excited. And I'm going to build this up with a mixture of Campagnolo parts, which you'll see on a bike coming soon in this video. So uh, keep watching. Check it out. You'll see what I'm up to. Now, the next bike is a 1992 Colnago Master PIU, or Pew. And this bike is in a Team Buckler Colors. Now, if you know Team Buckler from that year, they were sponsored by Suntour. This should have a Suntour Superb Group. And not to piss anybody off, but I wouldn't dare put Suntour on a Colnago. I put a Super Record Group, which is not correct. This bike is from 1992. These parts are from... 1986, seven, that kind of thing. But I always wanted a full Campanello, super record, Colnago. And here it is. It's got the Panagraph seat post, Panagraph stem, and of course, the highly polished uh, crank. Now this is not a Campanello crank. It's GPM, or GPM. GPM, help me out with that. But yeah, beautifully uh, polished with a Colnago panographing on it. Now, these wheels are unique. Check these out, guys. Those are the Sheriff Star uh, C-Record Large Flange Hubs. They are awesome. Now, I built this wheel set in 1986 or 87, not 87, I believe. I was at 10-speed drive imports in Melbourne, Florida. They had these in the Campagnolo vault, vault, and I took them home with me and built them up. And they still survive, and I still ride this bike. I love this thing. The last one in the garage is my 1993 Hetchins, and I forgot the model name. Yep, that's it. Beautiful bicycle. Check out these lugs. I got this from the collection uh, yeah, from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, beautiful bike. I didn't do an individual video on this one yet. Haven't overhauled it yet, but it does have your Campanello. Uh, uh, eight speed with down tube shifters and all the ornate stuff that you expect on a Hetchins, the monoplaner brakes, Thompson laid back seat post. You think, why do I have that? Turns out that top tube, I don't know if you can tell, is very short for this size frame. Beautiful bicycle, period correct, 1993 stuff, and uh, one of my newest road bikes. Now, the next bike is kind of a sad bike. Uh, I've been mentioning the Greg Brooks collection, and that gentleman uh, passed away uh, quite a few years back, and I got this uh, bike as part of a collection from Nashville. And this is the bike that he crashed on that caused him to get sick for many years. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. If you want to see details on that, let me interrupt this program to encourage you to check out a video. If you have not seen it already, it's called I Bought a Huge Bicycle Collection. And I'm going to link it down below. And at the end of this video, it highlights one Greg Brooks. That's the gentleman I got a, a collection of six bicycles from. And it's worth a watch.
Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Now you see why this bike is special and kind of tough at the same time uh, to have. It does not have the correct fork. This fork is a bear to find. This is a Milano from the early 90s. I'm guessing 92, 93. If you guys know your Milanos, let me know. There's a 314 on the, on the, down, on the tube there, on the lug. This is the same as a Mozzie Volumetrica. I really want to ride this thing. I need the correct fork. It's got a Campanello uh, eight-speed indexing on it with down tube shifters. And it needs a front wheel to match the rear. Uh, this is the one he crashed on. He hit a car at a high speed, he pulled out in front of him. It destroyed the front wheel and the fork. I strung up the frame, guys, it's straight. It's a Mozzie, or it is Mozzie. It's a Mozzie, it's a Milano. There's a story behind that as well. But guys, great bike. I need that fork, threaded, very long steer tube. So if you have one, let me know. Now back in the day, I was a GT bicycle sales rep from 89 to 99. And this was my sales sample from 1995. It's a Dino Cruiser and kind of cool. Matter of fact, this bike inspired uh, the next bike I'm gonna show you that was marked as uh, labeled Harley Davidson. And I'll show you that bike in a second. But uh, not much to tell you on this. It's a cruiser bike that uh, there was popular in California for a while. And I kept it for many, many years. So since 1995, I had this puppy. And here it is. This is a 1995 GT slash Harley Davidson Cruiser. Now the story goes, if I recall correctly, back in 1994, an executive from Harley Davidson was cruising the beaches of uh, California and he saw the bike I just showed you previously, the green one, and was inspired to make some uh, cruisers with the Harley Davidson label on it. And this is what they came up with. They came up with a line of three. Uh, there's some with like saddlebags and such like this one. So this one here is the lower end model. But I built this bike, put it at George Garner Cyclery up in the rafters and 10 years ago, lo and behold, it came up for sale. I asked the gentleman um, where he got it. And he said, yeah, it's in the rafters at uh, George Garner Cyclery. So, man, I built that bike in 1995. So cool. Now, earlier I showed you a GT uh, frame that used to be mine from 1995. All these parts on this 1997 Chinelli are going to be on that GT. Why would he do such a thing? Well, the GT from 1995, I didn't know how to equip it. But for a while, I had the original uh, late 90s Athena on it. Um, so therefore, I'm sorry, late 80s Athena. So now I'm going to put this stuff on it because I think it's a great kit. This bike here, I'm going to retro mod it. Not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet. Maybe a new Campy Chorus group, a brand new one. Mmm, that might be cool. Why? Because I want to be able to ride this thing like I do the Miata. I want to bring it on uh, uh, training rides and such. It's such a great uh, bike, great feeling bike. Love the way it rides. Next bike is an oddball. This is a Colnago. It's a Chitalian. One of two Chitalian Colnagos I have. What does that mean? Well, you mix China with Italian and you get Chitalian. It's uh, got chrome lugs. It's made in China. And it's uh, super swift, stiff, single speed. And I'm going to have a little fun with this and do a video uh, coming soon. Eh, I say soon. Maybe not soon. Maybe in the spring on this bike. You know, I don't think the, the tubing is anything fancy, but in 2012, when single speeds were all the rage, they came out with this bike. Way overpriced. I picked this up the day before all the COVID stuff hit in March of 2020. Ridden it about four or five times. And I enjoyed it, but I have too many other bikes to ride. But I'm going to keep it anyway, so that's, that's all there is to it. I'm going to change the tires and change the brakes. You'll see a video coming soon. My next Italian bike is a Mozzie. It's a fake Mozzie. It's back when uh, Haro was a distributor. And I honestly, guys, I seen this when I was in San Francisco. Someone pulled up to a stoplight on it. I loved it. Went to my local dealer and he was able to get this for me. So Campanile Athena from 2016. And you know what? This stuff performs really well. Oversized tubes, chromoly frame, Reynolds 525, which I don't know if that stuff's any good. You tell me. Very, very stiff bike. But look at look at this. The, de the detail is nuts. 
It's built wonderfully. Even the bottom bracket's chromed. Crazy, right? I have a separate video on this on the channel. Check it out, and it performs, guys. I ride this bike, I ride it hard. A little stiff on the bones. I wouldn't do a century ride on it, but it's pretty cool. Hey, I realize I'm getting too modern for some of you people, but I do have a plastic bike. It is a specialized tarmac. I don't know if it's a pro or expert, whatever one has the tall aero rims. It's got the eye too. I love it. I love the way this thing rides. It's fast. It's fun. I only ride it on the training rides though. I think I rode it six times this year. That's it. I guess I didn't do a lot, but yeah, great bike. Now my last bike is my daily rider. Now this is something I put the most miles on. This is a 2019 Moots Route 45 or Route 45. Beautiful bike, all titanium. And just look, look at the work on the, 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 the uh, just look at the TIG welding. Just gorgeous. And it rides like a dream. Full Altegra, mechanical. Got some uh, really cool Mavic, uh, Mavic wheels. Uh, weighs about 20 pounds uh, without all the stuff on it. Just a gorgeous bike. It rides like a dream. I did the Ragbri 50 on it, and it was awesome. Subscribe. In honor of getting 10,000 subscribers, my daughter made me a special brownie. Not that kind of special brownie, but a special brownie. You know what, guys? You made it. You made it through the whole video. You saw all the bikes that I had. Uh, there'll be some coming, there'll be some going, but for the most part, probably coming. And uh, as I make this move, as I make this transition into a new place, you'll see, you know, I don't know if I'm going to buy a place uh, with uh, a shop already done where I can just throw the bikes in or I'm going to have to build one. But if I have to build one, we'll, we'll have a makeshift shop in the next basement or, or something like that while I build it. But trust me, we're going to do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. But in the meantime... You get to enjoy my basement and some rebuild videos. And I'm going to be on the road. We're going to be interviewing some uh, frame builders and some uh, other collections, things like that, as well as building some bikes and rebuilding some bikes. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for spending the time. And we'll see you next video.